Right, ladies and gents, uh, this video's topic is bubble sort. Uh, bubble sort is essentially an algorithm that compares uh, numbers or letters or words in an array and tries to arrange them in ascending or descending order. Now, in order for me to describe this and tell you what you guys need to know, it's best to actually show an image of bubble sorting. So let's imagine that you have a, a list of numbers. So imagine that this is my original array. And as you can see, all the numbers inside are completely unsorted. Okay, uh, and imagine that we want to put them in ascending order. Now, a bubble sort array will essentially compare all the numbers in the list one by one. So it will, sorry, it will compare uh, pairs of numbers in the list and then try and rearrange them. So in the situation that we can see here in the original list, it will first compare 25 with 34 and it will see that these are ordered. OK, and then it will compare 34 with 98. And again, it seems like it's in order. And then when it compares 98 with 7, it will determine that 7 should be higher up than 98. OK, um, this will happen over and over again until 98 reaches the end. So it will become like this after the first pass. Now, the process has to be repeated since the rest of the numbers don't seem to be in order. So it will have to begin from the beginning. It will compare 25 to 34, and it will see that this seems okay. Um, and then it will compare 34 to 7, and it will see that 7 is smaller than 34, so it should move up. Uh, then it will compare 34 with 41. No change needs to be made. Then it will compare 41 with 19, and they will need to swap. OK, and then it will compare 41 with 5. And again, they will need to swap, giving us an end result of what we see here in pass 2. Now, notice that every time a complete pass occurs, we are reducing the size of the list that we are checking. So in the first original list, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers to check. Uh, after the first pass, then we checked six numbers because we knew that the, the biggest number was right at the end, and this will always happen. And as you can see, this happens over and over and over again until everything's in the correct order. Now, how do we do this? How on earth are we went, meant to do this? Well, most of you might be thinking, okay, cool, it's an array, so we should do linear search. Yes, that's part of it because we need to repeat the process multiple times each pass that we see here okay is a linear search restarting from zero meaning that our for loop will restart so we need another loop that will perform this resetting so on the next page here i've got an algorithm written out which is the most efficient algorithm for bubble sorting OK, and we need a few things in order to set this up. First of all, we need uh, a variable that will hold the number of our items or the size of our array. This will make life easier um, later on. Um, if you don't want to do this, you could just use the number seven in this situation. We're talking about this array here. OK, but I would use this uh, variable to make things easier. OK, now, as you see here, we have a for loop. This is our linear search. OK, and this is what's going to cycle through every single number and compare the first number with the second one, the second one, with the third one, the third one with the fourth one and so forth and so forth. And where it needs to um, swap numbers in case one is uh, bigger than the other um, inside our for loop, you can see that this happens. OK, now before we, we jump ahead of a few steps, let's start looking at the for loop from the beginning. Let me change the color so that we know what we're talking about. OK, so we're talking about the blue stuff. OK, now the first thing that your for loop does, the declaration of the for loop looks a bit weird. It says it's for I1 to number of items minus 1. Now, the reason it does this is because if, for example, I said from 1 to 7, 
okay? And then I came to perform this comparison. This comparison checks the first box of my array with the next one. Now, what if I am at box number seven, the last box, and I want to compare it to the next one? If I take a look at my array here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, here's the five, but what am I going to compare it to? So in order to avoid this issue, the out of bounds issue, okay, we just changed our for loop to start from one until essentially six, one shorter than the original size of our array. And what happens right after is this comparison statement that checks the first index when the loop is at, currently at one with the second index. When the loop repeats, this will check two with three and so forth and so forth. Okay, now if this statement is true, it means that the number that's after the first box is uh, smaller uh, than the first box. So it means that these two need to swap. In this situation, let's imagine that we're describing 98 and 7. 98 and 7 have to be swapped. 98 is bigger than 7. So these two numbers have to switch positions. Now, how do we do this? Well, that's quite easy. I'm going to, going to ignore this uh, Boolean statement here, and I'm going to focus on this. And let's make it uh, a red color. Okay. Now, in order for me to perform a swap, I need a variable called temp, or whatever you want to call it, okay? And I need to assign to the temp the value of my array at the first position. I could do it with the second position, it doesn't matter, but for the sake of the example, we're going to put in the temp variable the value 98, okay? Now, in the position that 98 was, we're going to replace it with the other value. In this case, it means that 7 will be placed in the position of 98. Okay. Now, if we do this, it means that 98 has just been replaced. It's lost. So, in essence, it's like we have 7 here and 7 at the bottom. Now, what remains is to replace this 7 with the value 98. Now, thankfully, we saved the value 98 in the variable called temp. So all we have to do now is go to this position and place whatever is in temp into this position. So if you take a look here, we're going to the next position, which is the value 7 here, and we're going to replace it with a number 98. Now, this process will happen until this happens. Okay? until 98 is at the bottom. But as you can see, this process has to happen over and over and over again because this is still unsorted. Okay, so how do we tackle that? How do we reset this for loop here? Well, the only way we can reset it is to use a Boolean value. And this is where the repeat loop comes in. So I'm going to change this stuff to green, okay, uh, here we go, and let's take a look at how that works. So I hope everyone's comfortable with the for loop, it's a pretty easy process, it's just the process of swapping values in an array, and when you see things like this, all it's referring to is, let's say that we are currently looking at position one, when we are looking at things like this and this, it's like we're comparing position 1 to position 2, and so forth and so forth. Okay, now, what happens in the repeat loop? Well, before everything happens in the for loop, we need a repeat loop that will reset the cycle. So it will essentially, the repeat loop will reset our for loop so that we don't get stuck in a, in a, in a position like this. So that we can perform this, and then this, and then this, until eventually we are completely sorted. Now, how does it work, though? Well, first things first, we're going to need uh, a Boolean value, okay? Um, in this example, we set the Boolean value to true. It doesn't matter what you call it or what you set it to, as long as you make sure that some things are correct. 
uh, and I'll explain what I mean in just a second. Okay, so here we have a no more swaps value. Okay, and we set it to true. And what happens <clears throat> after this, the for loop is executed and it begins swapping. Okay, it begins swapping a bunch of things. Okay, um, when it swaps, let's say we've reached this situation here, we as humans can clearly tell that this isn't finished. There's no way this is an ordered list. Okay, um, in order for us to know if we've been, if we finished though, we need to use something else called a counter, okay, called a number of items counter in this situation. And every time we perform a complete pass with our for loop, we deduct one from that counter. If you take a look at the diagram, every time we deduct something, the thing that we deduct is what's in green. Okay, so after the first pass, we've deducted one. After the second pass, we've deducted two. After the third pass, three, and so forth and so forth until we reach the sixth pass, okay, where we've deducted essentially six. Now, why do we care? Okay, well, if I do this, the next time I try and perform a for loop, let's say that number of items has become one, it's going to become, the for loop's going to compare 1 to 1 minus 1, which means 1 to 0, which means that this for loop will not be able to be executed, which means that we can't continue going on. We can't perform this any more times. There's no point. Okay? Now, there's one more thing to finish this puzzle. We rushed through the for loop and we skipped one thing that I've still got in blue and I'm going to underline it. I'm going to make it green because this thing is what's responsible for essentially telling me when to completely stop or when I've completely finished um, my uh, swaps. Okay. So when we come into our for loop, number of swaps is true. Let's say that my for loop will iterate two times and it will check the first value with the second value and it will be false okay so this means that this whole if statement will be skipped and the process will be repeated one more time if again this statement is false okay the for loop will not execute sorry the if will not execute again the for loop will terminate the number of items will be reduced and my termination clause for my repeat will actually be true, as you can see here and here. But if my for loop, inside my for loop, I have swaps happening, okay, this will become false, which means that even if my for loop finishes and I've carried out this step once, okay, the moment I come here to number of items, I will reduce my number of items, but this statement here, the until statement, will not be true. It will be false, since no more swaps are false. Right. Now, what do you guys need to know? Well, in my opinion, guys, this algorithm, the way it's written, is perfect. Learn it off by heart, because in your examinations, you might be asked to write it as it is, which means if you memorize it, you'll get free points, okay? The logic isn't very difficult. I'm sure if you read it once or twice and try and write it once or twice, it will make a lot of sense. I hope this video was helpful. See you in the next one.